Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Bite of Geek. Today I'm going to be going down the Home Assistant rabbit hole. Wish me luck. So about 18 months ago I had a bit of a play around with Home Assistant and uh, if you don't know what Home Assistant is, well very briefly it is a, a free open source platform uh, that you can install locally on some hardware inside your uh, your house and uh, it basically allows you to control your smart devices um, you know you might have smart bulbs and plugs and stuff like that and you use the manufacturer's app to do that where you can do all of that with home assistant so it's got a huge focus on kind of like privacy uh, and integration and um, you know, kind of like local control of devices as well. So you know, you can create yourself a nice dashboard where you can control all these things, stick it on the wall. Lots of videos about it on YouTube. Um, you know, I recommend you know if you've never seen this before to go off and look at some of the stuff that people have created with Home Assistant. It is very very impressive. Um, however, it can be uh, a little bit time consuming and a, and a little bit daunting if you've never been involved on some of that before. Uh, certainly when you get into uh, some of the more intricate uh, integrations, I guess. So, as I say, I had a bit of a play around with it about 18 months ago and, um, you know, kind of got it working just on a bog-standard Windows PC. I got it running on a, on a Dell PC server. So it was, uh, you know, probably not the most efficient machine for running something like that, but ultimately it allowed me to have more than one thing happen on that machine. As things have changed in my uh, uh, smart devices and you know the, the way that you know I want to use automation within my house, you know I've decided to have a look at Home Assistant again and reappraise my approach towards uh, the hardware that I'm using uh, with that. So as I say, first implementation of it was a Dell. PC, it was a Dell server, uh, obviously that server did a lot of other things as well, and that worked absolutely fine, um, but you know, it's not a great device for leaving on 24-7, uh, especially when you know, probably most of that time that's, that's just running Home Assistant really, so not, not a, a good power efficient device from that point, of, uh, that point of view. What most people put Home Assistant on is some level of Raspberry Pi, whether that's kind of like a, a 3 or 4. And, um, you know, for an awful lot of people, uh, that works extremely well. Um, it is one of the options that I have looked at uh, as, to, as to whether it will be viable. I don't have a huge number of devices and it would more than likely be absolutely fine on a Raspberry Pi. Um, you know, I think when people go and implement this, I think, you know, the, one of the caveats on a Raspberry Pi is probably swapping out um, the SD card and using it on a, an SSD instead. Um, so that kind of drives the cost up a little bit there from my point of view. So uh, certainly in the UK, you know, by the time you've got a case and the power supply, um, you know, power adapter and the, the SSD and all that kind of stuff, you, you're coming in at kind of, you know, maybe around 180, 200 pounds for something like that. But it is a low power device. And obviously that is one of the the, the key things that uh, you know I want to try and implement this time around. So uh, you know one of the other options I've got, uh, which I did start um, having a look at. Obviously, I have my Synology NAS, the DS920 Plus, and uh, that can run Docker uh, on there, and you can run Home Assistant in a Docker container. Uh, which again, you know, I've tried that. It works absolutely fine. It's a, a really good, stable environment, and I've been able to set up some dashboards uh, via that route, and no problems whatsoever. However, um, one of the real great things about Home Assistant is is the integration across uh, devices and protocols. So a lot of my smart devices are Wi-Fi based devices. I want to introduce some Zigbee based devices into my network and um, you know, that is going to require me really to introduce some kind of uh, either a Zigbee hub or a, uh, you know, a Zigbee uh, dongle which ideally I would plug into the back of the Synology NAS. Now in their wisdom uh, Synology with the DSM7 have restricted use of the USB port on 
the NAS to uh, only USB devices that are classed as storage devices. So that option is actually uh, not going to be available to me when my uh, Zigbee dongle finally arrives. Um, so I kind of, you know, really got to abandon that route. Uh, there are hacks you can do, but, you know, Synology could effectively kill off that implementation at any point in time um, by removing some components uh, that they no longer support off of the NAS. So it's not a very stable long-term solution for me. So the device I'm going to go with is an Intel NUC. So I actually got this off eBay. It's not brand new. It is a couple of years old. It's an i5, a sixth generation i5 and um, you know, 8 gig of RAM and uh, you know, it's got NVMe storage in there as well, built-in Wi-Fi, all that kind of stuff. So um, plenty enough, you know, more than enough power in there to run Home Assistant. So this machine will actually do other things as well. You know, I'll be able to, you know, use it for other things other than just Home Assistant. But um, I think the main thing is, is that, you know, their, their price on that, their, their pay for it, was actually cheaper than buying a Raspberry Pi with you know um, the additional storage as well the ssd on top of that to um you know to, to get it to the spec really that kind of like people were recommending um so you know i've never used one of these before obviously the idea is really is to bring you guys along a little bit of a journey on this so you know i'll be showing you the installation of uh, of linux on this and and you know all the way through to home assistant and you know adding the smart devices on when i get my zigbee dongle uh, as well when that finally arrives um you know i'll be going through that and hooking everything together so you have a bit of a mini series uh, something new for the channel i've not really done something like that but you know i have quite a few smart devices you know i've got my doorbell um you know i've got my cameras obviously i've got plugs and bulbs and all that kind of stuff you know i want to start getting some more uh, things like zigbee sensors and hooking all that kind of stuff up together and home assistant is perfect for that so there you go guys i'm sure the comments uh you know, there'll be lots of suggestions uh to go you know from you guys in the comments down below as to whether this is the right route or not you know um happy to to listen to uh your your points of view on that you know have you gone down the the intel nook route for this uh, you know let me know down below in the comments so if you've enjoyed the video hit the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber um, but as always thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye for now